here. It is great to have all of you with us. Just a couple of announcements before we begin our service. Um, first of all, if you have the opportunity after service, please remember to pick up your materials out of the mailing, out of the mailboxes. Um, they've gotten a little bit full, obviously, and people haven't been in and out very much, so uh, try, to, uh, try to do so if you can. And then secondly, uh, we need to work a little bit harder at having people stay after the service and at the bio class to help us sanitize the cubes afterwards. We're ending up having kind of two or three people do it every single time. And that's a fast way to uh, wear people out. So if you could uh, please, uh, there's the sanitizing material is over in the kitchen, and uh, there'll be someone there to try to make your help. And with all of that, we begin with the first one. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature 
all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
The Old Testament reading for this, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, is from the 45th chapter of Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him, and gates that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes of secret places. That you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen. I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. The epistles from 1 Thessalonians, 1st chapter. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers. We are bringing before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that we, you may become an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. Not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Acacia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. They themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we have had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
grace be with peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the gospel just read, taken from St. Matthew chapter 22. We look especially at that final verse, therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. I'm always amazed when the lectionary seems to kind of line everything up just right. This isn't the Sunday before Election Day in the United States, but we're not too far off. So it's kind of appropriate for us to reflect for a little bit, at least, on Caesar and God. So they come to Jesus, the Pharisees and the Herodians, who are kind of Herod's henchmen. They come to, they come to Jesus, and they think that they have got him. They're going to play a word game against the word made flesh. Probably not a good choice on their part. But they've got it figured out. And they ask him the question that they are sure is going to stick him. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Is it appropriate, we could ask, for the Christian to engage in government service, to pay taxes to Caesar or not, to be a part of the world, or even that dirtiest of sin today, to engage in politics? Therein lies the question. It would be very easy and convenient if we could separate our lives into these nice little clean categories. God and church and religion and all that stuff goes over here. My personal life is here. And what I owe to the state is far away or there somewhere. We like the idea of separating these things. We like the idea of separation of church and state. It's very American. We like the idea that I can neatly categorize and split these things up in such a way. But even the Pharisees and the Herodians have some sense that this doesn't work. They think that they've got Jesus trapped because they know that if he says, yes, pay taxes to Caesar, then, they, then he will be guilty of colluding with the Herodians and with these, this government that has taken over their land. But if he says no, then clearly he's going to be a rebel. They've got him. So they think. But the problem is that this kind of separation it's not real. That's not actually how our lives work and function. Everything is mixed up together. It's all jumbled in. It's all one because I am one person, not the Todd that does things for God, the Todd that does things for myself, and the Todd that does things for the state. None of you do that. We are one person. And so because that separation that the Pharisees thought they had caught Jesus in was, is so obviously not the case, they thought they had attracted, but they had forgotten the most important thing. As we heard from Isaiah, I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. God is the Lord of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, but he makes the entire world by the power of his word. All of it start to finish. There is no part that is okay. God's not going to be involved with any of this because God created the whole world. Now that's hard. Hard for 
me. I'm sure it's hard for you. Because if we try to pull God out of one of these things, kind of like pulling on a strand in a sweater, the whole thing kind of comes unraveled. All of a sudden, God, we don't want God involved in our lives. Well, who is it that gives us? We don't want God involved in caring for our world. Well, it is actually his world first. God's hand of blessing is what orders and keeps the whole world moving and going. And so to pull these things apart, while that makes for nice and simple politics, it's not actually true. Now, don't mishear me. I'm not saying that we should use the Bible instead of the Constitution. That would be ridiculous and not true. But what I am saying is that God is God of Caesar and of you and of all of us. The question is not whether God is the Lord of heaven and earth. The question is is whether God is on our side or not. So that's where our hope lies. Our hope doesn't lie in having a government that's going to vote the way that we want, or even do things that we want, or even do things that are right and good and true. We pray for these things. We want these things. We work for these things. But we don't place our hope in those places. Trust not in princes, they are but mortal, earth born they are, and soon decay, as the hymn says. No, the gift, the remarkable gift that we get in this image and inscription language, rendered to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's, the remarkable gift of the whole thing is that the Father offers up his Son for the sin of the world so that we will be united with him forever. And the reason that the Father offers up his Son for the sin of the world is because the Son is the exact image of the Father. And guess what? You are made in God's image. You are united to him first as a human being in creation. But you are reunited with him in holy baptism where God put his mark on you. God re-adopted you as his child and heir. And where God says to you, I am always for you and I am always with you. This God, the Lord of heaven and earth, permeates and penetrates the whole world. For our help always comes from him. It can never come from anywhere else. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That uniting that we have in God that's the gift that means we work, we strive, we love our neighbor as best we can, we ask for forgiveness, and we start over the next day. And that, that is not a copying out, that's not giving up, that is actually placing our hope right where God promises to be. What that means is that we don't have to be afraid of the chaos and the lack of control that we all feel sometimes. And we all feel that way. Perhaps more this year than most. But we need never be afraid because God is the Lord of heaven and earth and he is your Lord and he unites himself to you both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your
hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. We rise and confess the Holy Spirit of faith in the words of the night. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven. Fought us the faith, 
and let us join them in passing on the faith to those who yet to come. Lord, be your mercy. Be your mercy. Let us pray to the Lord that we may remain steadfast and immovable in faith, and that we may endure to the day of his coming again, when we shall be reunited with those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest from their labors, to live in his eternal presence and sing his praise without end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we would normally receive the offering. I would invite you to please. Uh, please leave your offering in the offering box in the back of the sanctuary or to give electronically. We will continue in just a few moments. <laughs>
our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, on, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has 